Hi, I'm Carl Macker, and I'm going to be speaking to Alistair today about what life is like for a totally blind person in lockdown. Q Talks is sponsored by Impact Funding Partners, the RS McDonald Charitable Trust, and the Sutter Charitable Trust. To find out more about how to access our services, visit www.qandreview.com or email aaatl at qandreview.com. This programme was produced and presented by our Access to Audio Ambassador team leader and our Recruitment Training Officer, Alistair McPhee. Hello there and welcome to this, the 17th edition of Q Talks from the Cune Review Print Speaking to the Blind virtual studio. Hopefully you've not just been listening to our chats, but also our daily news podca- podcasts over at cunereview.com forward slash free podcasts, being recorded from their homes by our amazing team of 15 home readers. With this week's announcement, it looks like we will be staying virtual for another few weeks, to say the least. But today, I'm delighted to be joined by Carol Macker from the RNIB Connect Scotland group. Welcome, Carol. Thank you very much for having me. It's brilliant to be here. Well, Carol, we're we're not seeing you um, today because actually you yourself are visually impaired. Is that right? Yeah, I'm totally blind. Um, I was born totally blind. I've never had any sight at all. So... how do you find using Zoom calls? I mean, are they easy to use? or um, Relatively, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I use Zoom with JAWS, which is obviously the screen reader that, um, provided by Freedom Scientific. And I think it's fantastic. I also use Microsoft Teams as well, right. which uh-huh. is a bit more challenging. But again, with JAWS, it's you can use it. You know, it's if you've just got to be, you've just got to persevere with it. And, and and again, obviously on Zoom, Zoom can be quite a visual thing, but you're you're using it primarily as an audio chat room. Um, do do you take part in many calls where, you know, are you told that people are on camera, or and and do you feel, you know, um, is that a negative thing? Do you feel that you're not on camera, or are you quite glad you're not on camera? Um, I, I can't say I thought about it to be honest. Um. I think it's good that because of the situation everybody's in at the moment, that everyone's sort of taken notice of like Zoom and how it can be used, um, how it can be used in an audio way to make it audio mm. friendly for blind and visually impaired people. So it doesn't have to always be about sight and always be about cameras. Well, I, I must, I must admit, I was watching the the, the BBC um, uh, Click program a few weeks ago, and they were talking about Teams and Microsoft products and and Zoom, etc., and the accessibility issues around about that. But obviously, you yourself, you know, you, you you find it relatively easy to get into a Zoom call and and to take part in it. Um, yeah, but obviously, it's worth remembering that obviously different. Um, Blind people slash visually impaired people are are at different levels. So some people Mm -hmm. might struggle with things that I find relatively easy or vice versa. I might struggle with things that they find easy. So everybody's on a different level. Well, thanks for actually bringing that up because one of the things, um, I I think there's always this thing, oh, you're blind, so where's your guide dog sort of attitude? Um, I mean, I'm partially sighted with keratoconus. But um, my thing is is all about um, uh, photophobia or um, uh, focus issues, and, and and therefore I use large screens a lot uh, in, in what I do. Um, but I'm in, in many ways I'm fortunate in that um, you know I, I've been asked if I want corneal grafts, etc. Um, I'm just a wee bit wary of that because of the success rate. But but what 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 is your visual impairment, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I have something called Nori disease, okay. um, uh-huh. which I've had um, obviously since birth. And I, to be honest, I'm quite I'm quite proud to be me. I mean, I obviously I don't know what having sight's like because I've never had it. Mm-hmm. So do I miss it? Well, I wouldn't know what I'm missing. So right. uh-huh. you know, I'm, I'm I'm quite happy to be a, a totally blind person. I mean, I live I live alone. Um, I try to get on with things the best I can. Um, and that's, that's, you know, you've just got to get on with it. I mean, there's people worse off in the world at the end of the day. Exactly, exactly. And and again, to to to, to adopt that patronising approach to things. I mean, do you have a guide dog, or do you do you no. use white stick, or how do you get? I have a white stick which I carry around, but I don't have a guide dog. No. Now, I, I noticed you said that you carry it around. 
I mean, do you use it very much, or the white stick, or is um, it just for I, awkward situations? I should really use it. Um, I do get guided the the major, well, all the places that I go really, um, off people. But I should really use it. But I, I I get this habit of being lazy and um just you know I I the way I look at it now is throughout my life I had to come to terms with the fact that. I wasn't going to be like the other kids in the street. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I am totally blind and I couldn't just do what the other kids done. So I was sort of embarrassed about being blind. And it's just sort of the last few years that I've really like sort of coped with it a lot better. Fantastic. Um, um, and obviously since then, that's when I've obviously became to, to live on my own. And, and then I'm not so as, as uptight as I used to be about it. No, uh, and, and, and again, has lockdown... Do you feel lockdown has taken you back the way in any way? I mean, is this does this whole that the RNIB has launched an excellent um, campaign about give me space? Uh, I mean, ha have you had people uh, in shops or streets or anything like that of being aggressive for, because you're not aware that you're not two meters away from them? Um, I personally haven't. Um, but again, lockdowns obviously stopped me from going out a lot. Um, uh -huh. And it's sort of affecting my mental health. Um, I do, um, you know, get depressed a lot um, mm -hmm. when I'm not when I'm not going out and about and stuff. And obviously, I do a lot of a lot of traveling um, in the UK. Um, Fantastic. And obviously, that isn't happening at the moment because mm -hmm. um, of the res restrictions. I have been trying to get up and down at the odd, the odd time up to Scotland um, from here in Durham. Um, but obviously, with the restrictions getting tighter and and things getting worse, progressively worse, then I'm not gonna, you know, risk doing anything like that. I mean, well, I, I hate I hate to tell you, Carol, but in, in today's news, there's something about. I mean, Scotland hasn't declared um, independence or anything overnight, but uh, apparently, the first minister's asked us not to travel to England That's and right. is encouraging English people not to travel to Scotland. I mean, in, right. in effect, we've closed the borders. Yeah. Um, we, we don't have a border, but we, we've in effect closed the borders. You know, and I think that's that's also quite frightening. I'm actually, despite my accent, I'm actually from Bristol. Okay. Um, I'm a Bristolian. My, one of my best friends lives in, lives in Westbury. All the best people do. All the best people live down that neck of the woods. But basically, I, I must admit, I think that's the other thing. People make assumptions about um, about people in general, and and I think that uh, one of the reasons we started the the, um, the the home recording team and being determined to keep going during lockdown was we'd heard um, Kay Adams uh, who. You might know from uh, B uh, from uh, ITV's Loose Women programme, Kay um, is also a BBC Radio Scotland presenter. Yeah, I've been on a programme many times. All ah, right, right. Well, well, she actually, she did a piece about, uh, with uh, fairly early on, about the numbers of blind people that uh, were being, you know, get out of my way, you know, can you not see that, you know, you're too close to me? And, and then there's this whole, all this thing about face masks and all these sorts of things. So I'll admit to you, Carol, I'm, I'm, um, I, I've not left my garden um, since uh, since March. I've been out to, to Morrison's twice and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, 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 I just feel so uncomfortable. I think it's difficult As for someone like me. I think why I'm finding it difficult is because I'm one of these blind people that will like get up and go. So mm -hmm. like I, I wouldn't think twice about saying maybe going up to Aberdeen um, and then the next day going down to um, say Bristol which I did right. do um, before the lockdown in March, before it all kicked off, the lockdown Fantastic. all started. I, I went up to um, to Aberdeen um, on like uh, on the Saturday, and then I, I went stayed in Aberdeen, and then I, and I went down to Bristol um, on the Sunday um, um, because it was a football match on the Tuesday. And then I came back from Bristol um, on the Wednesday, and then I went to Blackpool on the Friday. So I'm, li I'm literally, I, you know, the people that know me that, probably are listening um to this at the moment you know they, they would probably tell you that um obviously that i'm just i'm very just sort i just sort of get up and go and just and determined and independent and yeah i mean i probably sometimes i probably don't think about what risks there is and what, uh -huh. what i'm and what i'm putting myself into 
but it's it it's, it is what it is. I don't want to just sit here wondering. You know, right, I want right. to I want to get out and and I've met so many people around the UK, uh, both that. in England and in Scotland by by attending um, Sunderland and Hibernian football matches. Yeah, and Fantastic. and obviously Scotland national team home games at Hampden Park. So uh, and I'm and I, I've built up that little connection. So, like, I, I know that if I'm going somewhere and I know if I'm going on my own, I can sort of message someone that I know that lives around that area who I've met before. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they can't help me, they may, they'll put me in touch with somebody they know that that can, you know. So it's Fantastic. it's all it's all planned. It's all, it might not say it to it might not seem that to like to sighted people because they don't really look into like you know, the great detail of it all. Because mm-hmm. as a blind person, that's what we have to do. You know, we, we have, have to, to make sure out. things are planned. Make yeah. sure assistance is booked on the trains, you know, weeks and months in advance. Make sure train tickets are booked, you know, so they don't get all that. I mean, there is certain people that do, but the, the majority don't. Um, and, and, and do you, I mean, do you find that um, the various train companies are helpful in all that? They're fantastic with me, yeah. Um, I think Good. I think it's because I've been traveling for years now. I'm, I'm sort of I'm a, as I would say in the capital, I'm a well-kind face. Uh-huh. So <laughs> um, I think I think that, that you know I have a lot of chat with the train guards and assistants. I've obviously got my my profile set up and stuff like that, and it's great. I've got per- personal phone numbers to the train station so that if I feel any in any danger or anything like that, somebody. I can call them and say, look, I'm in this seat and I don't know where the doors are, you know, can you come, make sure you come on and get me, Fantastic. you know. So Fantastic. It's, it all works out really well. And the people obviously that meet me at the other end or meet me, you know, in, in, in establishments or whatever, they, they need to take a lot of credit because they, they obviously help me um, get to and from places. And I couldn't do that without all of that, 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 that help, you know. Now you, you mentioned there that you're a, you're a bit of a Hibs fan. Um, yeah. But how did that come about? What What is your connection with Scotland? I am um, attended the blind school, the Royal Blind School in Craig Miller Park in Scotland's capital city in Edinburgh. Um, uh-huh. And I spent uh, many happy years there, five years there, com- coming up on a on a Monday morning um, in a taxi that was paid for by the local authority and going back on a Friday afternoon when the school finished. From, from and, Durham? Yeah. Yeah, right, um, right. so like two and a half hour drive. Uh-huh. Um, and I started going to Hibs midweek matches. Um, where one of my best friends, who was, who was uh, I was at school with, she attended Hibs and I sort of saw her passion for Hibs. And I, uh-huh. um, I started going and then I uh, left school and I, I thought I, I, I can't just, you know, say bye-bye to Scotland and, and, and just leave Hibs like... Uh-huh. And I decided I wanted a season ticket. Uh, of course, I didn't have anybody to go with because um, obviously my friend that goes as well is visually impaired. So yeah. um, things are, sli- you know, at times are slightly difficult because she has a family and stuff. And I put a, an advert out on Radio 4th or 4th right. one. Uh-huh. And um, Grant Stott kindly helped me put the advert together and get it out there. People came forward and... Um, and said they'd help me to games, which was fantastic. And then I just sort of met people through people, decided I wanted to go to like an away match, tried that, and thought, mm. yeah, I like away games as well. This. Yeah, and um, Hibs are really good. They offer something called a home and an away season ticket. So I put my name down for that, and yeah, I just started just started going to games. And basically, wherever Hibs and Sunderland go, um, as long as they're not at the same time, I go, you know. Well, well, in fact, um, one of uh, I won't claim uh, David is one of our boys, and that uh, he 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 did a few readings for us, but primarily his interest. Um, David Tanner, who who used to be on Sky Sports, yeah. Uh, David started doing the commentary for Rangers when he was a boy, right. uh, and his dad is actually chairman of the playback service for the blind. Right. Um, but David uh, has just posted today on Instagram that uh, they're now doing the Edinburgh podcast show. You might want to give that a listen. It's basically for Hearts and Hibs fans. uh, It's a podcast that's online. Um, Yeah, because David obviously does work for Hibs TV and Rangers TV. Yes, So um, obviously he had had um, an interview with uh, Claire, one of my friends, Claire Ford. Um, Fantastic. He'd done an interview with her recently. 
Well, he's a great lad, David. He, he certainly was um, many, I won't say how many years ago to embarrass both of us, but many, many years ago when he was just a teenager, uh, he, he he was involved with, with Coon Review in the very, very early days. And um, but his dad, as I say, um, uh, was was I don't know if he still is chairman of the playback service for the blind as well. So mm -hmm. uh, that that's the connection there. But um, now doing the job that I do, I come across many people that think that having a visual impairment means that they can't volunteer, but that's not the case, and and certainly not for you from what you've been saying. Um, you're involved in the RNIB Scotland phone calls. Can I ask you to tell us a wee bit more about them and how you're training to be a volunteer with them? Yeah, um, so basically um, I've done some um, like volunteer training, the first part of it, and I'm just still waiting to do the um, safeguarding training. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fantastic. I, it was really well put together. Um, obviously, I, I want to give something back to RNIB Scotland because... Um, I really got involved just around about like, you know, the, like the lockdown and stuff, mm -hmm. and they've 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 done a lot for me. And I don't actually think that they realise it. They're really really good, um, good bunch of people. Um, and Fantastic. you know, they're all obviously really all inclusive because obviously mm -hmm. with myself being from England and living in England, but obviously having that connection to Scotland, you know, a lot I've got a lot of friends in Scotland, um, through the football obviously and, and through going to school there. Um, they've sort of welcomed me with open arms Fantastic. and it's let me take part in these phone calls. So like um, two mornings a week on a Tuesday and Thursday, um, normally at 11 o'clock, um, you would hear me in the general chat calls mm -hmm. with RNIB. It's just, just basically when um, people can call in or get dialed in and, um, you know, you can just talk about whatever you want, really. Um, it's right. just, oh, that's obviously it does what it says on the tin, you know, the general chat. Um, so it's a, so, a, a, a sort of support call that people can dial into and, and just give each other support, more or less. Just knowing that yeah. there's a voice there at the end of the phone. I mean, there's some people, um, who obviously don't have anyone, and mm -hmm. I really feel for them, sort of people, you know. And obviously, if I can give something back, um, by being a voice on the end of the phone with other people as well. Um, and it's the, the last an hour, you know, so it's not mm -hmm. like they, they take up the whole of your day. Um, or how, when... how, how many people tend to take part in the general call? Um, in the how, general do you get calls? an idea of it? I mean, do, do you all introduce yourself? Or yes, that's basically, yeah. So we'll have like a facilitator. Um, the the people um, who who work for RNIB Scotland, they like facilitate the calls, and they make sure everyone feels you know part of it and in, and um and and inclusive and you know like included and they we go around introducing ourselves so people know our names mm -hmm. um there's probably around about maybe eight nine people um, right. in, which uh -huh. is really which is really good um obviously r and i b scotland um they run other calls as well so like they they run um a, a football call which i'm involved in right. on a Tuesday afternoon and that's done over um microsoft teams um, right, uh -huh. which, which is is fantastic as well. So we get to talk football, which is obviously something I'm really, really passionate about. So we get to do that for an hour on a Tuesday afternoon, um, and they have a quiz um, on a Thursday. Um, it's normally um, once a fortnight, mm -hmm. and I've wrote the quiz. Well, this is my second time of of uh, writing that quiz now, so that's. Uh, that's something that I'm going to produce uh, to them. Um, and we have a choir group on a Wednesday. You, you have um, a choir group? Yeah, so again... That, oh, heck, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, well, How does that I, I work? Actually, well, this is it. I, like, I actually like singing a lot. Aye, aye. Um, and the choir group works. So, so again, Mike, who's absolutely fantastic, he um, plays the piano. So again, everybody dials in or gets dialed in. And of course, it's difficult because we're not all face to face. So, um, obviously, the timing can be slightly out because you know you're, you're singing into your phone. Mm -hmm. We try and encourage for maybe to move the phone just a little bit away from your your face, uh -huh. um, so uh, you know, so that it doesn't pick up a, a, as lot of background noise as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but the, obviously, the choir started uh, started recently. Um, um, on Microsoft Teams, the last time mm -hmm. it was on again, that's on. Um, 
um, every fortnight. Mm -hmm. um, but in November and December, I think we're, it's happening every Wednesday um, because they're going to start singing Christmas carols and stuff. And again, they're, they're all like, all the calls are for an hour and that's for an hour. And obviously um, getting on Microsoft Teams, it, 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 well, it was a success a couple of weeks ago. Um, apparently I wasn't actually at that one, but it was, um, for what I've been told and what I've heard is that it was really good and they're going to... They're going to try and get a lot of the calls onto Microsoft Teams, which is which is good. So does that then mean that the uh, is Teams easier to use than Zoom or or even phone and a straight phone I think, call? I think it's down to Zoom can show all of your details, right? Uh -huh. Um, so Microsoft Teams doesn't, so you can hide like the your profile. Whereas, obviously, it's all about data protection. Uh -huh. and, I, uh -huh. and I think that's why they don't they don't use Zoom. Um, uh, I, I must admit, I mean, th th this is actually encouraging to hear, Carl, because, I mean, at June Review, we've been trying to get our, our volunteers to take part in Teams calls. Um, and I ba basically, you know, there's always, oh, it's difficult to use or it's, and, and the fact that there's obviously so many visually impaired people taking part in their NIB calls, it, it must be relatively easy to to use. We 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 use we tend to use them for our management uh, team, you know, our, our, our paid employees. Uh, but we are trying to get and, and everybody's making excuses at the moment for, for for finding it difficult to get involved. So it's great to hear that you guys it, are. Doing it is it. because I, I mean I don't know if people realise that you don't actually necessarily have to be on the computer to be in Teams. Mm -hmm. Um, you can obviously call in with you with your phone. Mm -hmm. Um. But it, and it, but there's a thing, there's a thing that you can actually click on with your phone that says you know join the join the meeting. Um, but if you click on that and say you know it, like it'll put in the phone number for you, and it actually puts in the code for you as well, so you don't actually have to dial anything in because obviously one of the issues was the the fact the codes change yes. and trying mm -hmm. to trying to double tap on things as a blind person and read a code at the same time, which the codes are generally long, you know, a long list of numbers. Yes. Yes. Um, that's difficult. So you, I can see, I can see why the, why they are difficult. Um, but it, no, that, that's that's great to know. I mean, I, I must admit. I mean, we, we were trying to do. A, we we did a well-being festival that included uh, uh, sessions on um, autism because of the numbers of uh, autistic people who are also visually impaired. But also, yeah. um, we also did um, uh, that involved Lego building, which was great fun. But we also did um, uh, support sessions through the Happy Mind program. But we were trying to do some sing-along sessions, and I think there was a general General feeling that either nobody wanted to see or to hear me singing um, uh, because nobody seemed to want to take part. I, I, I keep telling everybody that I was in Calamity Jane when I was at school um, but um, I think they all think that I'm tone deaf uh, because nobody seemed to want to take part in the choir competition so if nothing else out of today's Q Talks even if it's our own volunteers don't respond to, to anything else that's been said today you know if, if the RNIB can get a choir together, I'm pretty sure that we at Kuhn Review should be able to get a choir together. Uh, so there's absolutely. a challenge. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll blame you, Carol. We'll say it's a challenge from Carol. Yeah, but, uh, blame me. That's fine. <laughs> I, I don't mind that at all. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I must admit, I'm fascinated that the RNIB is doing all these calls because, again, I mean, I, I saw something in the RNIB Connect group, which is a fantastic group. I think there's about six or 700 people yes, there in the RNIB yeah. Scotland group alone. It's brilliant. Uh, and I mean, obviously, again, you know, people just think, oh, Facebook, it won't be accessible. But obviously, you're all finding it relatively easy to use. And, yes. and you know, you've got the football call, you've got the, yes. the general chat. I, I think there was something the other day I spotted about cinema calls as well. Yeah. I mean, so basically, on a Monday afternoon, um, there's a there's a film group. Right. Uh -huh. They get together and they talk about, you know, what, what people have, have been listening to. And they also get put out a, um, a link to where you'll find all of the films with audio description for that week. Um, uh -huh. And again, um, that's that's a really well run group. Um, and obviously, we'll have the campaigns call as well, which is good. You find out what RNIB are, are, are doing or what issues are affecting, obviously, um, blind people's lives. Uh, in Scotland, and um, that's that's on a Wednesday, which is like once a fortnight. Um, Fantastic, and it's and it's it's good stuff. It's really really good. And the thing is, obviously, the 
you know, the, the RNIB Facebook group um, brings a lot of people together and it, mm-hmm. you can make a lot of friends through it. Um, and again, the staff deserve a lot of credit because they're putting on these 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 groups and these calls. And, you know, it, it's really, really good because I don't think sometimes because mental health is such a, well, such, you know, such a, a broad subject that some people just don't maybe, don't maybe um, explain how their how their mental health has been affected. Mm-hmm. So I think the staff are doing really good work and, and actually not realizing that that you know how how much it it means to, yeah. to people. And I mean, if any of our listeners um, want to get involved with any of these phone calls, how do they go about doing that? If they were to contact um, via email, Jane dot mm-hmm. at rnib dot org.uk then um i'm sure jane would point you in the right direction so, so jane Coates is is the main is the main i was going to say they're the main man but the main, main person, lady yeah the main she lady in, in the group fantastic yeah she's the hostess with the mostess yeah <laughs> so, get well, again jane and she'll uh she'll sort it out and you, you, um of course you can also look for the rnib scotland facebook group if you are on on Facebook. Facebook. And it's the, the RNIB Connect uh, Scotland group and, and, and the RNIB has got their own Facebook page uh, That's uh, separately right. but but the That's Connect right. group, I'm, I must admit we, uh, the, the group again, a shout out from us to them uh, I mean they've been fantastic allowing us to promote um, things like the BWBF app and, and their daily podcast service too that, that we provide and, and, and they've been great uh, support to us as well. So well, really that's, how I, that's how I that's how I found team. found you, you know, yes. through, the, through the group. And that's what I'm saying. It just it can bring you so many opportunities. And of course, I'm sure you'll post the link to the to the group on your your page yes. as well. So yeah. you know, pe- please, people, if you are listening out there, don't feel like like that you're on your own because you know you're not. And you know, it, you know, you you you're really welcome to get in, involved with. Um, any kind of service that, that helps blind or visually impaired people, but definitely our NAB Scotland, yeah, we, you know. Well, I think I think, I think for us, one of the things that we are trying to do at Kuhn Review is, um, you know, and in some ways, uh, the lockdown has been a bit of a blessing in that it's made us think about different approaches. Um, many, many years ago, I was talking to somebody fairly senior in the, in the government and, and um, they'd done a, a campaign um, for literacy that was on a poster. And I, I'm, I tried to point out, thankfully, I'd been at, at uni with the person I was speaking to. And I was like, you know, you've done a literacy campaign on a poster. How is somebody with a literacy issue going to be able to read the poster? Yeah. And, and it's the same for visual impairment, that the number of times that you see, you know, or you get funding or support that says you've got to do, produce something in print. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, our, our, the folk that we're aiming this at won't be able to read it. And no. that's again where, I mean, we, when we did our banners that are now up in libraries, uh, which of course are shut at the moment, uh, our banners, we deliberately did them in huge print so as people with partial sight could see them. But then um, we were trying to sort of say the best way for us to reach blind people is actually through radio. Um, and in some ways, these Zoom calls and being able to do the Q talks and being able to speak to visually impaired people directly in this fashion or promote things in audio in this fashion has actually made made us rethink our service. And it's been great. I mean, our, our funders that we, we plug at the start and end of the talks, uh, they've been fantastic in realising that, you know, yes, this is this is a way for us to reach people. Uh, and we're very grateful for that. And one of the things, obviously, we are promoting all the time is the British Wireless for the Blind Funds app, which is their new mobile phone app. Have you come across that yet, Carol? I haven't, no, but um, yeah, I'm very curious. So that's something I'm going to um, download uh, onto my iPhone um, be, 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 and use. But basically, it's um, if you go to the, the App Store or the Google Store, Mm-hmm. And you do a search for talking newspaper. Uh, it uh, you, you said you're totally blind, but for anyone who's partially sighted, it comes up as a, a yellow square with a, a black with black headphones on it and a, a newspaper. But um, it's from the BWBF, the British Wireless for the Blind Fund, and basically what they've done is encourage all talking newspaper groups from across the UK 
to get involved and to upload their service um, to the app. So you can, can say that you want to look at Scotland. Uh, you find the talking newspaper groups that are uh, in your area. Yeah. Um, and you can listen to your local paper. And obviously, Well, the thing you... is, I think, yeah. um, showing my age, I actually did uh, listen to um, my local talking newspaper here in Durham, um, but it was by cassette. <laughs> so how long ago was that? Wow. You know, we've come a long way since then. But yeah, so I enjoyed that. So yeah, it's something I'll, uh, I'm going to look into. Well, what, what you won't be aware of, Carol, is I'm now looking for my Zimmer because uh, you've made me feel really ancient. Um, <laughs> uh, originally, when we first started, Kuhn Review started 38 years ago right. and, uh, last month. And uh, we used to edit on Reel to Reel. Right. And uh, I've already mentioned playback and, and Peter Peter Fraser there, uh, he taught me how to do uh, Reel to Reel editing. Uh, and But now we've been through cassette, we've, we've gone digital. But one of the things that we are very proud of is that we are the only group in the country that's, uh, we upload uh, individual articles so uh, to the BWBF player. So if you if you want to only listen to the sport articles, you can actually go through and find the headline for the sport. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. don't need to le listen to all the COVID articles. You can choose to go down and listen to the sport. So hopefully you don't get your Ferrero Rocher uh, chocolate just yet, Mr. Ambassador. But um, we will, once you've, once you've got contact me and you say, I know I love the BWBF app and I'm using it all the time, in amongst the rest of my busy lifestyle, I will then send you your virtual Ferrero Rocher. Oh, um, I look forward uh, to that. I, I will get that, your virtual box of chocolates. But, um, I mean, what, what, how have you, you found uh, lockdown and how have you found um, the, 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 the overall support that you've been getting from all the various organisations? How has that gone? Um, I'm, I'm actually... Um... Probably, I would say I'm probably only in, involved with RNIB Scotland. Really, um, mm -hmm. I try and I try and live my life um, as independently as I can because I know that there's people out there that really, really need as you know a lot of support. And I think this comes back to because obviously myself and my brother, we were both born totally blind, and we've known nothing different. So obviously, you've, we've just sort of got on with it, and I think. You just try and try and and do as much as you can yourself. And there is a lot of things I do need support with. I'm not, you know, I'm not I'm not some sort of self-proclaimed perfect person. Um, that I do need a lot of help with things, but you've I just, just try and be it. patient. Yeah, I mean, I think what what's been encouraged encouraging out of the lockdown, out of everything, is that the sighted community seem to have picked up on the fact that how important technology is to blind people. And yes, vision impaired yes. people. Um, yeah. I think that they now, because uh, like you say, a lot of people are using things like Zoom for their everyday work. Um, mm -hmm. They now realize how important like that audio is to us and having that connection. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they realize how important the, the talking computer is and the talk and the talking phone because they're on their computers at, at work all the time now from home, you know, maybe more than they used to be. So they, they didn't maybe appreciate how important it was to blind people. Well, e even something as simple as, you know, the, working from home. I mean, I, my I actual, the Coon Review studios are literally 20 minutes walk from, from my house. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not allowed to go to them at the moment uh, no. because it's non-essential. Uh, and, and again, but the advantage to that, um, the likes of today, for example, we're recording this on a Sunday morning um, and we're doing it, uh, from my box room in my house uh, and hopefully the sound quality will be good enough but again it makes it it has meant that you know you, you take the opportunity to do calls like this or you you know you but you again you know that the downside is obviously that I'm able to work on a Sunday but I am working on a Sunday but I'm, I'm enjoying I must admit Carol I'm thoroughly enjoying this chat and I'm, if, if nothing else uh, you've inspired me to be a lot more positive today um, I, I, and basically, um, you know, despite uh, Scotland did win against w uh, Wales yesterday in the rugby, which I was delighted about. So it was, few, yeah. Uh, I, I, it was a good match and I, I'm looking forward to watching the rest of the rugby that I, I recorded. Um, but I, I must admit, Carl, I really do appreciate you coming on 
Hugh Talks and talking to us here at Q and Review. Uh, and as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm once again a massive shout out to Jane Coates and the team at the RNIB Connect Scotland Group for all their support that they've given us. And obviously they're giving you, you yourself. So once again, Carol, many, many thanks for getting involved and, and the best of luck. Thank you very much. And as just a quick message to all blind and visually impaired people out there, you know, stay safe, stay positive and realise there is help and friends out there that you can get in touch with in, in these RNIB groups and obviously you, with yourself as well. So, you know, you're not alone. Just remember that in the, in the back of your mind, no matter what happens, you're not alone. Well, th- thank you so much, Carol. And and as I say, uh, please keep in touch and we look forward to, to uh, you, you posting this interview far and wide. And uh, as I say, well, we, we will be in touch soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening to the interview. I really thank appreciate you. it. Q Talks with Liz Bailey. Our access to audio programmes are sponsored by Impact Funding Partners, the RS McDonald Charitable Trust and the Suter Charitable Trust. To find out more about how to access our services, visit qandreview.com or email aaatl at qandreview.com. This programme was produced and presented by our Access to Audio Ambassador team leader, Liz Bailey, and edited by our Recruitment Training Officer, Alistair McPhee.